Everyone's complaining right now. People aren't happy, especially if you own property in San Francisco. And if you own office property, well, you're really screwed at this point. And it's not just San Francisco, guys. It's basically all of California. Like Los Angeles, San Diego, and especially San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose are all taking massive beatings with people saying San Jose is like just a ghost town. There's nobody there. Oakland, highest car theft, insane amounts of crime. It's worse than Gotham. And San Francisco has the highest like homeless population I have ever seen. And one in eight San Francisco home sellers is losing money, which is the highest share in the entire country. In fact, most places in the country, even suburban areas, you know, they have already recovered in price. A lot of post-pandemic boom towns, right? You know, at first they do really, really well, and then they do really, really bad because less and less people went in. But eventually those places, like their prices eventually started recovering. Look at Phoenix, right? Look at Austin. Prices went down a lot, but prices stabilized and prices are already trending upwards. And don't even get me started with like some of the Midwest suburban cities and Miami. Those prices are at an all-time high. And San Francisco homeowners are four times more likely than the average American seller to take a loss. The Bay Area is taking massive hits with the typical San Francisco seller takes a loss of $100,000 than what they bought for. That's crazy. Imagine, no, on average, a home in San Francisco is selling for less than 100 Gs. And here's the thing about this. It may not seem that bad when Redfin says one in eight, but remember, many, many San Francisco owners bought these homes back in 2005. They bought it in 2000. Some even bought it in like 90s. You know, so you get the idea. You know, Wells Fargo is a great example. They bought this really, really high end office in like downtown which is around this area, and it's a good location too. It's right next to the Trans-America Pyramid Building, which is basically like the Empire, Empire State Building of the West. So you have this high-end Wells Fargo building, which Wells Fargo spent $108 million back in 2005, right? So we have almost two decades of price appreciation, and guess how much Wells Fargo sold it for? $40 million. So you're telling me over the course of almost 20 years, you lose 60% of the value of the building. That's crazy. If you go to pretty much most cities around the world in the first world, if you bought a home or office tower back in 2005, you're already up at easy three, four, even five X. Look at Hong Kong. If you bought real estate in Hong Kong in 2005, you're up like three, four X easy. You know, even Japan, same thing. Australia, same thing. Shanghai, same thing. Dubai, same thing, right? But in San Francisco, property values are lower in some cases than the early 2000s, which just shows you how devastated the real estate market is in San Francisco. And it really just boils down to nobody wants to buy it. And the reason why nobody wants to buy it is so many stores are closing. It's a domino effect. It's a doom loop. Because before the pandemic, Valencia Street, which is in the Mission District, it's a high-end street full of bars, clubs, and very, very nice restaurants. This is actually a place where a lot of people like to go, right? Office workers like to go. It's a very hip street. You know, great restaurants, great vibes. Look at how nice the street looks, right? You got cool restaurants, outdoor bars, you know, even expensive boutique condos, and much, much more. So Valencia Street is high end, but after the pandemic, when San Francisco lost 150,000 office workers, Valencia Street, which used to be San Francisco's hottest, hottest restaurant destination, is now struggling to regain its footing with record vacancies because Valencia Street used to be one of those places where the moment there is a vacant spot, somebody takes it. But now the mission is being plagued by homelessness, crime, theft, and much, much more. Okay, now obviously there's still great places in San Francisco to chill, but let's be real, if you're opening a business in San Francisco, no matter where it is, you're gonna be facing some of the biggest obstacles compared to opening a restaurant or a business in like another city or just pretty much outside of California. So Valencia Street is getting hit pretty hard. And like I said before, as people leave, more stores close and more stores close, people leave in even higher droves. And like I said before, the tech workers gone, what is the future of San Francisco? Nobody knows. There's barely any construction, okay? Nobody wants to be in here. Redfin is showing guys 
a side of San Francisco which people have never seen before. You know, the amount of people losing huge amounts of money in this market is insane. Because real estate, if you buy it in like a decent city, even Manhattan, if you bought real estate in Manhattan in 2005, almost two decades of price appreciation, you're making a lot of money. Because 2005 Manhattan prices, 2005 Brooklyn prices are dirt cheap compared to now. But San Francisco, you actually lose a lot of money. And on Zillow, don't be fooled about these prices. These prices may seem pretty high. Like for example, this very nice condo near the Mission. It's like a warehouse condo, beautiful bones, $1.15 million. 1,600 square feet, I mean, this was easily sold for like $1.5 million before the pandemic. And I guarantee you, this unit, they're not selling it for the listed price. None of these units will ever sell for the listed price. They're all gonna be heavily discounted. So if you go to the transactions, go to some of the transaction websites for real estate in San Francisco, you will see many of the actual prices sold are usually 10, 20, even 30% below the listed price. And it's happening everywhere. We're also seeing construction being halted. And people are also saying, oh, you could build more affordable housing. You can't really change these office buildings into homes because if you want to change it, it's almost $1,000 per square feet, which eventually puts it in like the high-end condo class or the luxury apartment class, which luxury apartments in San Francisco are already foreclosing. Let me show you guys what's going on in Nima, right? This is a high-end condo building. This is right next to the Twitter headquarters. Literally, a stone's throw away from Elon Musk's X. Right here. Here's X or Twitter. Here's Nima. Literally just a crosswalk. And the vacancy of this is an all-time high. They're about to foreclose on the building, and people are saying that the chances of them foreclosing on their $400 million loan is extremely high right now. And look around, you have canceled projects everywhere. This is supposed to be a project that's gonna revive a lot of the projects in San Francisco. But look at this, right? $1.2 billion tower. Are they really gonna construct it near a homeless encampment? Because Market Street is slowly becoming a massive homeless encampment with record vacancies. So the owners already poured millions of dollars to get architects, get some of the machinery set up, but now they have halted construction. They don't want to build this tower. It's a $1.2 billion tower and with record vacancies so they're not making any more money. They've totally stopped the project. Go to Miami, go to New York City. If you get the green light to build a massive tower, you're basically set. Those towers make a lot of money. Even Manhattan, towers like these get sold out very easily, especially when you price it reasonably. One Oak is another massive tower scheduled for around the same area as Hayes Point. But One Oak, they didn't even broke ground. They just gave the land back to the lender. They don't even want it. They don't even want to build it. And these are all towers that's supposed to really get the economy going in San Francisco. But with two massive cancellations in the construction project for San Francisco, it is not looking great. And the real estate situation is only getting worse with the Federal Reserve hiking at rates like crazy. And the rates are not decreasing at all, guys. Inflation is going back up. Really. PPI numbers, CPI numbers are all terrible, and inflation is going to slowly go back up. Rates are going to go even higher, and get ready, okay? San Francisco properties are going to get even cheaper.